Okay, so Carly's parents, unequivocally, there is an abductor. She was abducted. So that, I presume, is what she is telling them and told them when she got back about what happened to her. Now, police have not posted any um, information about anyone that we should be looking for. They could be working on the investigation. They, maybe they don't need the public's help. I I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But let's try to figure out some of the issues here um, from, a, from a psychological angle. Like, if, if she was abducted for two days and fought her way out of all of this, what sort of treatment does she need? If something else happened, how could you tell from speaking with her. Joining us from Los Angeles, forensic psychiatrist, body language expert, columnist of Inside the Criminal Mind and the front page detectives, Dr. Carol Lieberman is with us. Uh, Dr. Carol Lieberman, I'll begin with you. Um, she was taken to the hospital and evaluated and released. Would that normally be some sort of psychological evaluation as well, whether it's for the trauma uh, the the shock of everything that happened or to make sure that she's okay? Well, I would hope so, but it seemed like it was a relatively short time um, that she was at the hospital. You know, it seemed like they should have been doing more tests. But, you know, I know, Vinny, this might make me sound like I lack compassion, um, but I don't believe a word of it. I didn't believe it from the beginning. Um, I feel compassion for her because I think she has some problems, you know, she's a troubled young lady. Um, you know, one of the problems is that we don't really know very much and there are, you know, pieces of information online and you don't know how, which ones are, are valid and which ones aren't. But, um, you know, some of the things that bothered me from the beginning are the fact that she called her brother's girlfriend. She didn't call her own boyfriend. Like if there was something that she was afraid of, you would think that she would, her first call would be, besides 911, would be to her boyfriend. Um, also, there is some, some information online about the fact that she had a bad day, that she was caught stealing at work and that she flunked out of her nursing course. Now, again, I don't know that that's true, but if those things are true, one explanation could be that she was afraid to go home. She was afraid that her parents would be angry at her. So if she makes up this story, um, you know, about being abducted and so on, they will just be so happy that she's safe that they, you know, wouldn't um, yell at her or punish her or whatever. And, and, that, these other and they are happy that she's safe. And that's how it turned sure. out. Now, Dr. Carol Lieberman, what you said is not necessarily far-fetched because when we covered the trial of Alec Murdoch, and I am in no way comparing her to Alec Murdoch, um, but one of the things that he did is uh, these diversionary things. He got into trouble at work, obviously a much different type. He's ripping people off, et cetera. But then all of a sudden he became the victim of something. So. Uh, I don't think it's far-fetched. We've seen something like it before. Dr. Carol Lieberman, what are you, what are you reading from uh, the boyfriend's statement here? She's physically, uh, she was literally fighting for her life for 48 hours. I, I, um, I think that's what she's told everybody, but I don't think it's true. You know, this also could be a kind of Sherry Papini kind of case. Maybe she was with some other guy. You know, there was a report that um, some car had come behind her, although there's quest that's questionable now whether that was actually true. They couldn't really find uh, evidence of that, but, but perhaps she was spent that time, those two days, with some guy. And certainly one thing is for sure, she wants attention. I mean, have you ever seen, when, when there are cases of, various kinds of cases, the gla where did all these glamour shots come from, from the beginning? You know, everything, everything, every story about her has all these posed glamour shots. Well, I think all media. of us have these, I mean, I've got some glamour shots out there well, as well, yes. Dr. Lieberman. <laughs> yes, yes, but if you were lost or something happened to you, would that be what would be in the news? I mean, it just seems like it's a cry for, for attention. And yes, sure, she could have some psychological disorder. She's 25. That could be the beginning of schizophrenia. And she had a, um, a hallucination, a visual hallucination of a, of a toddler, for example. She could be, there are reports that she was taking drugs. That could explain it. Um, you know, there's, she, as I said, she could have been cheating uh, and wanted these two days, you know, to figure out if that other relationship was going to work. There, there could be some other explanations for this, but 
Um, you know, there, there's, she also gave a story, or there is a story out there about that she was in a, taken into a truck and she was fed Cheez-Its for the 24 hours. I mean, there's so many different stories, so it's hard to know, but it just doesn't hold together. And, you know, if she was brought to the hospital, one would have hoped that she would have had a much longer, more intense kind of psychiatric evaluation, no less physical examination, a rape kit, all of that. Uh, I, I agree on that part. I, I was surprised that she was back that quickly. Yeah, but We all agree, though. The good news is she's home with her family and she's safe. Dr. Carol Lieberman, Janie Lacey, thank you both so much.